Hey everybody, I've got a demo for you today for splitting a piece of bassoon cane and going ahead and running it through the pre-gouger so that it's ready to get soaked and be gouged in our, in our next couple of days. And so some things that I want to walk through today involve some equipment. Some of it is, um, I've also got a, a more equipment-free method for selecting how you're going to split this cane. So the, all of the things that I'm going to show you today rely on some basic principles of looking for balance in the cane. Ultimately, when we have a piece of cane that turns into the bassoon reed, we want to have a strongest, the strongest section of the piece of cane ultimately that you're going to use. The strongest section be right down the center because that's where we want our spine to be. And we want to have something that is symmetrical, in, both in terms of uh, what will eventually be the top and bottom blade. Right? So if you can imagine me folding this in half, I want this half to be the same as this half in terms of strength, in terms of um, kind of any warping in the cane that might happen. So I'll show you kind of how I choose and and select some pieces of cane based on that. So balance from uh, side to side, balance from top to bottom, and then the strongest point down the center are kind of the three main principles when I'm selecting this cane. So if I'm looking at a piece of tube cane, just by visual assessment, I know that ultimately this is going to have to be shorter. Right? I will shorten this down to what fits in the the gouger and what will become a reed. So I'm eventually going to turn this into that 120 millimeter cane. So if I go and pre-mark this, one of the first things that I do is look at the cane. You can line it up against a straight edge if you want. I also do a, a really highly scientific rolling test. And I'm looking for a place that it's, if, if it's warped on one side or the other. So I can kind of pre-mark some things on the cane that I'm seeing. This side is skinnier than this side. So I know ultimately Ultimately, I'm going to split off the part that's the most warped. A lot of times, I end up taking a little bit off of each side because the cane itself kind of, uh, tapers inward. So I'm looking for that symmetry this way. I also look straight down the center of the tube. And I'm looking to see if it looks like a circle. Are there any places that the cane bulges out? Are there any places that look like there are knots in the wood where these these vascular bundles or these the fibers themselves are more dense than others and I'll go through and mark those this one I can actually feel you can see right here there's a little ridge where the cane is more compressed the knot through the middle of the the cane and I know ultimately that's going to be something that I don't want in my blade at all if I can help it so if I find an imperfection in the cane like that I can also see that this is a little flatter in terms of the curve than that one. I'm looking for imperfections in the cane and I split on them because if you can imagine how the shaper eventually will line up along the tube, this will get shaped off in the end. I don't use a tube splitter because I like to not be kind of tied to having exactly 90 degree angles in four pieces. I just use a razor blade or an old knife if you have one that's kind of past its prime. This is where you can be really careful. You should be really careful. <laughs> Start the split. Get your fingers out of the way and slide the razor blade the rest of the way down the cane. So there's my first split right on that imperfection. If you have something like a radius gauge, this can also help you find where the curvature changes. I don't know if it's easy to see on that. There's more of a gap around the bottom, so I know that this is a flatter part of the tube. That is a more round part of the tube. It's flush with the radius gauge, so I'm going to try to keep that as, an, as, a, as a piece of cane. So if I line up with where I split that, I can see that's a pretty nice cross-section of cane right through the middle there. I'm lining up this 90 degree angle. You can see this little hash on the radius gauge. Line that up with where I split on the imperfection and just check to see if the rest of it is a good piece of cane and that's lined up with the gauge. Looks pretty good. If you don't have this, you can also go back to, what I mentioned earlier, this highly scientific roll test. This one looks like I actually should be able to get four, four pieces of cane out of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and split the other. This is a very dull razor blade, so be very careful. <laughs> Got two semicircles. Now you can really see the warping. See how this gets? More, more narrow as this end goes. So I'm going to go actually go ahead and mark on the inside of here. Put my big X 
so I know when it comes time to split the, or when it comes time to guillotine this rather and shorten, I'm going to get rid of that part that tapers inward. I don't want anything that's going to encourage strange shapes in my reed. You can use a, a straight edge for this as well. So our viewers at home hopefully can see symmetrical, 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 and then we get a little bit of a warp. It's actually kind of a torquing motion. So it looks like the cane has twisted. I'm going to mark this side. That's the one that I will eventually chop down. And now I repeat this process with just a semicircle. Does it look like I can get two even pieces of cane out of this? That one looks pretty good. It's flush with my semicircle. I'm just going to split this directly in half. So I recommend using the razor blade with the safety ridge on it. Start it. And now I have these two pieces of cane. You can see where I still have that little X. You also can lay the cane on its side and see whether or not we have some, some rocking motion that happens. That can help tell you which edge that ultimately you want to get rid of. Repeat the process on this side. This one I can see already looks a little thicker over here than over here. That's actually just a, a thicker piece of cane. So I'm going to check and see if there's something that I want to get rid of. Pretty flush on that end. Ooh, as I slide up toward the opposite end, I start to get some daylight that appears in the middle of the gouge. Or in the middle of the piece of cane, rather, right along that radius gauge. The good news is it's symmetrical. So I'm actually going to split. If you can see how that is flush with the radius gauge, and then as I rotate it, it starts to get a little bit more daylight. So I know that this is a more balanced piece of cane. So I'm actually only going to be able to get three pieces of cane out of this tube. Mark where that was. This is the no-go. I'll mark it nice and dark so I can tell that I don't want that. Split. Save the good piece, and this piece is my garbage cane. So at this point I have three usable pieces of cane. I actually like to go ahead and guillotine at this point because it's just easier than, than trying to push everything through the pre-gouger. So our gouger here has a guillotine built in, which is quite convenient. There's a blade in there, careful. <laughs> so I'm going to take the part that I marked, have already identified as the asymmetrical, line that up with the, the bumper on the end, hold it in place, and off with its head. So now I've got a nice 120 millimeter piece of cane. Line that up, hold it in place so that I don't get a, 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 any bending when this happens. And repeat third time around. You can see a little bit of my leftover X there. Line that up, hold in place, and chop. So this is more, more garbage cane. So at this point, it's those same three principles right, that we've been using for selecting and splitting the cane. We're looking for pieces that were the same from back to front, what would eventually be the top to bottom cane. Pieces that were nice and even from side to side. This is my sort of rocking or rolling test. This is what the radius gauge did before, making sure that these are flush with the semicircle all the way around. That's going to tell us that the left to right sides of the blade on either side of the spine have a much greater chance of being symmetrical. And so that top to bottom, that left to right. And then I'm just looking throughout to make sure that if there are any imperfections in the cane, any density changes that I can tell visually that those are, if anywhere, toward the center of the cane, that I ultimately want it to be the thickest and the most dense on the spine and not anywhere else. This one worries me a little bit more because you can see how it's more dense and compact over here and then the cane gets squishier as it gets over the right. I'm just going to mark this one so I know in the future as I start gouging this down that I need to keep an eye on how that goes. Some people are a little more discerning than I am with this, and this would just be thrown out and you'd end up with two out of four. 
I try to make as many things into reed shaped objects as possible. So I just keep a note of which ones were perhaps less than ideal. When we move over to the pre-gouging stage of this then, that is a blade also. We're gonna keep it nice and flush, push through. And what this does is shaves off this little edge. You notice that those of you that are used to making reeds, it looks a lot like the beveling process. Right? It's shaving off these edges so it'll fit in the gouger. Pull all the way through. Sometimes when I'm doing this a little faster, more efficiently, I will um, I'll use uh, the push rod for the hammer. You can also use your piece of garbage can to push that all the rest of the way through. And now you have a piece of cane that is pre-gouged, split nice and balanced, and ready to be soaked for gouging.